On today's Join Us in France, Katie and Nathan tell us about their wonderful visit to Annecy, Chamonix and the Alps. This is Join Us in France, episode 121. Hello, I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is the show where I tell you about my travels and discovery of France, and also interview other people who visit France. I love France. I was born and raised here. I live in France. But in my early 20s, I left France to go live in the UK for two years and then the US for 18 years. So when I came back, I had to rediscover my own country and... That was fascinating, and now I want to help you understand France better, at least the way I see it. Thank you for your donation, Ron Witzko. I'm not sure how you say your name. Witzko, I think. It sounds good. <laughs> your support is very much appreciated. If you would all like to support the show, you can do it either by tipping your guide, and there's a button for that at the, ver at the beginning of every show note page, or you can use any of the services that are featured on the right of the Join Us in France homepage. Your support helps cover the cost of keeping this show going, and it also shows me that this is valuable to you and that, and that you'd like it to continue. If any of the words and names that we say in French escape you, visit the show page for this episode, which you will find at joinusinfrance.com forward slash 121. That's the number 121. Where you will find detailed show notes with everything spelled out and any useful links uh, that we mentioned. On today's episode, Katie and Nathan are back to tell us about their visit to Annecy, Chamonix, and the Alps. The interview starts and stops really abruptly because episode 120, 121, and 122 were all supposed to be one episode originally, but that would have been a two-hour episode, and that's way too long. So keep that in mind. I wasn't being rude by jumping right in without greeting them or saying goodbye. This is just something that happened because of audio editing. All right, just to tell you a tiny bit about Katie and Nathan, they are from Durham, North Carolina. Oh, that's hard to say, Durham, North Carolina. She's 26 and a teacher, and he's 29 and a mechanical engineer, and they visited France in June 2016. All right, very good. Okay, let's go back to your, your itinerary. So uh, where did you go after Colmar? So after Colmar, we drove south down to Chamonix. Yeah. And that was nice when we went back to Switzerland. Um, mm. And so if, if anyone is making a drive from Colmar to Chamonix, we, we stopped at an alpine slide in Switzerland. We won't spend any time talking about it because it's not France, but <laughs> we would recommend that as a good like break up to the long to, drive. To the journey. What was the name of it? It was, uh, oh shoot, what was it? It was in... Kindersteg. Kindersteg. Yeah. Kindersteg. Kindersteg. Yeah. So K A N D E R S T. Yep. E G. E G. Okay. Yeah. Kindersteg. Yeah. Okay. And that was Alpine slide. So you, you slide on a. Like a little skateboard kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then you, you can't steer, but you have a, a brake. Right. So. Yeah, it was so much fun, and the the mountains were kind of in uh, this like the Sound of Music style. All the wildflowers were blooming. Oh, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. So that was a, a nice way to break up the journey from Colmar, Colmar to Chamonix. <laughs> yes, you're saying I'm right. <laughs> well, so after our trip, or not after our trip, after we went to Colmar, everyone would ask where we had been, mm -hmm. and we would say, "Oh, we went to Colmar." And they would look at us like we were crazy, and we would say, oh, in Alsace. And they would have no idea. And then eventually they'd say, oh, Kulma, in Alsace. And we yeah. were like, that's what we said. Yeah. <laughs> you just said. 
<laughs> so after that, we started trying to say it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you sounded good there. You sounded good. <laughs> yeah, we try to be forceful with with Kilma in particular because that's a you know a smaller city. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. doesn't. Not everybody has heard of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, Very good. So Chamonix. Yeah. Chamonix. So Chamonix was a very different feel. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty much everywhere we went was its own. It felt like its own country. Yeah. Um, so it was on the border with Italy. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. didn't have that German influence. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And it was much more English speaking friendly. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, I think the hotel we stayed in, everyone was from Britain. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, including, or everyone who works there. Yeah, yeah, including the workers. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we we stayed at this uh, cool place called Hotel Vert. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of the the cheapest the cheapest hotel in that area. Uh, there weren't any. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. There weren't any hostels that we could find. Um, so this is the cheapest place we could stay, and it's probably a ten or fifteen minute walk from the city center. Mm, okay. Which wasn't so bad because everywhere you look, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So you and a it's nice just, walk. Yeah, yeah, and it's right next to a park, which was yeah. It made for another nice walk. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, three minutes in the opposite direction, and you're at a beautiful park with a right. little lake and some <laughs> fake castle ruins. Yeah, <laughs> fake, fake castle, castle ruins. ruins. I I can explain that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We we took the walk over there and, and enjoyed the views and we we took some pictures next to this, these old ruins and when we got back, uh, we asked about them because there was no sign or plaque or anything describing the ruins. Yeah. And so it turns out that uh, a maybe two hundred years ago, a Scottish guy owned a big parcel of land in that area, and in order to make it look more like the Scotland that he knew. He had a cathedral ruin built as a ruin uh, just to, to make it look more scenic, I guess. Because his idea of beauty was to have a little little ruins spotting area. Which we can say is accurate. Yeah, yeah, because we, we've been to the yeah. we did a pretty good job. But what's funny is that it's that building is so old that to Americans, it's a true relic at this point. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh, everyone in Chamonix, you know, just thought it was this, you know, yeah. dumb, dumb fake building. But we thought it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's funny. I never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think you would unless yeah. you go there. But yeah. it is. It, yeah, it's a it's a pretty ruin. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you're rich enough, you can have anything built, I guess. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. So what did you visit in Chamonix besides the fake uh, <laughs> castle ruin? So our our plan was to do an epic hike ah. uh, to take the, the gondola, which is called, where is it? Ah, uh, the Aiguille du Midi. Ah, l'Aiguille du Midi, yes. Yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. So... When the weather's nice in the summer, you can take that, I think, all the way to the top mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and walk along the mountain ridge. Half, no, halfway, you can walk. Halfway. Oh, from halfway? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You take it up halfway and you, you walk over the mountain to the other side uh, and there's a huge glacier called the Mer de Glace. Yes. Uh, yes. And, yes. And then you can, you can be a tourist there and take the train back. Yes. Uh, unfortunately... The this season has been really wet. Yes, and and it was still very cold in Chamonix. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everything was covered in snow. Uh, and all, everything up on on the mountain. Oh yeah, on the mountain was was snowy, and all the trails that were up that high were still closed to your average mm-hmm. tourists. Oh, uh, so you couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. So we we what was funny though is we were sitting there sipping our hot cocoa halfway up and we saw true like alpine explorers on these trails and they were in full gear with their crampons and their pickaxes and they were all <laughs> tied together you know 
they looked miserable and so we were we just waved to them as they as they went on the trail yes have fun guys (laughs) Bye -bye. Uh but we did really enjoy taking the lift up there anyway yeah yeah the aiguille or how do you say it l'aiguille du midi yeah so we we ended up doing that anyway even though we couldn't do any hiking right Um, and well, it's pretty. I mean, it takes you all the way to the agreed. It doesn't take you all the way to the top, does it? It, it takes you way up. Way up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you're within a thousand meters of the top of Mont Blanc. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Four thousand meters high. Yeah, you're way up. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so it was on on a good day. You can see forever. Uh, and we, we saw pictures of that and we're, and we're hoping to experience that ourselves. But, uh, when we went, it was, Not it was kind of gray and snowy, but yeah. we, we actually really enjoyed it still because, um, at the base in Chamonix, it was kind of sunny and it was kind of shorts weather. And mm-hmm. then at the very top, it, it felt like you were in, on like an, uh, Antarctic fortress or something. Wow. So you very know? cold up there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think it actually ended up raining down in the in the city and okay. town. But it so was snowing. Uh, where we were, it was snowing, and that was much more enjoyable than rain. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, Snow in June. That's kind of crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yeah. At, so at the at the top of the lift, there's like a little, I don't know, fortress type thing, and there are all these uh, metal gangways to climb on. Uh, and you're totally exposed to the one kilometer drops, you know. Ooh. Um, <laughs> oh, I was, oh, I would be it, so scared. <laughs> it, it was intense, uh, yeah. but very fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I would and completely safe, obviously. I mean, you know, this is like a metal construction. Yeah. So we actually have a comment there too. Um, definitely not as safe as an equivalent thing would have been in the United States. Mm. I feel like in France you're you're much more responsible for your own safety. Yes, you are. Yep. <laughs> and in the United States, more um, the safety of your children. Exactly. Yes. I, I feel like kids could get in trouble pretty quick yeah. if they, yeah. if they weren't well behaved, which all the French kids were. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think it would be totally fine to come on this trip and bring kids up there. They'll be fine. Yeah. But. The same thing in in America would have a million people on staff standing around telling you not to do this, not to do that. Yeah, gardening, yeah, yeah walkways. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the the fences would have much more rails, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. signs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I was uh, at this place just last week in Spain, where you go down these stairs and then the the path turns, and if you look. It's, it's like there's nothing stopping you and there's this like 10 meter drop to the water well to rocks and then the water and i'm like there is no way in america they would let it be like that because no even a person with bad eyesight would fall right down i mean like oh that scared me i was like okay we're crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah we noticed that in france with things like that instead of having a sign saying do not come this way they would have a sign saying if you come this way you're in danger but you're still allowed to yeah yeah, yeah. Which, do whatever you want yeah i liked it i think it makes people smarter i think so yeah <laughs> it might make them you know deader too but <laughs> sure that's true <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that sounds good. And so, Chamonix. How long did you stay in Chamonix? We were there for just two nights. Uh-huh. Two nights. It, okay. it was our our shortest stop. Yeah. 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 So that so that one day where we went to the Aiguille du Midi, yeah. we <laughs> wanted to kind of make the most of that day. Yes. So we also ended up taking a little train to the Mer de Glace. Uh-huh. Yeah. Instead, in, instead of hiking over, uh-huh. uh, you can take a train over as well. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. good. Very good. And the view up there is probably beautiful. It was. It's it was awesome. really beautiful. And we witnessed a rock slide. We did. Oh. A, well, a small one, I guess. Sort of. It was from across the little valley. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the, the oh gosh, what's it called? Glacier. The glacier runs in a valley that has been dug out by the glacier. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's unfathomably wide. 
Mm. It's it's super wide. And so when you look across to the other side, we saw these little rocks falling down. Mm -hmm. But the noise they made, it was thunderous. Oh, yeah. Uh, the whole valley shook. And, wow. And luckily there was a, a little expert on staff standing around with the microphone kind of narrating what was happening. Mm. And we talked to him a little bit, and he said the, the boulders we saw were the size of cars. Oh, my goodness. Rolling down, yeah. So they're far away. You can't. That's why it was so loud. Right, uh -huh. right. Wow. Yeah, so valley amplified the sound, but the distances were so far that everything looked small. It looked like sand. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So but, hopefully it didn't do any damage to roads or stuff like that? No, yeah, no. no. So, it was far yeah. away from anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, the the other side of the valley is totally unimproved. It's it's all natural. Mm, very nice. Yeah, so very perfect. nice. So probably that area would be fun for kids. I assume that you know if it's pl yes. a place where you could hike and uh, go on a gondola and that sort of thing, they'd love. That. Oh yeah, it's yeah. I would say the the big tourist items are much more kid friendly. Yeah, and then. The fun things you do in Colmar, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and the and the people with limited mobility, you, you as far as you could tell, I mean, you, you, I mean, you took a train and you took a gondola, so I assume if even uh, if you're not in super good shape, you can do this. Well, once you get to once you take the train to Merida Glass, you do have to. You have two options: you can ride another lift a gondola or you can hike and we took the hiking option but then those two um points meet up mm. and mm. at that point you have to take i think it's about 400 stairs down. yeah it's a it's still ah. a long way so uh, and it's just it's it's metal stairs yeah okay okay so that's yeah. good to know that's good to know a real midi would be easier to uh -huh. experience Yes, I could say you you could definitely do that one, uh, and it de it depends on your your level of immobility, I guess. Right, yes. right, right. You do have to stand in the gondola on the way up. Yeah, but you could if you had a wheelchair. Oh yeah, could, right. You could sit. Right. <laughs> yeah. But there's no seating provided. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Sounds really, really good. See, that's one place where I really want to go. I haven't been to that area in a long, long time. You definitely should. So on your list, you also have Annecy. Did you do that on your way back or did you do it right away? So that was the last stop that we ah, made. Okay. Okay. Which, which was, it was very similar to Colmar. Yeah, pretty. Col like the, to Colmar or to Chamonix? To Colmar. To Colmar, really? Well, just how it looked. Okay. The yeah. canals and flowers. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's a, big, it a bigger city. Much more... Like the old, the old area of Ansi was much more integrated with the new areas. Mm -hmm. There wasn't as much of a, like a sharp dividing line, mm -hmm. I would, uh, which was nice because we could go to the post office and <laughs> go right. to like a monopri when we needed to. <laughs> right, right. Things were closer by. That's cool. What did you think of Anus? Of, well, let's talk about Anusi because it's geographically not very far. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So we actually, um, we stayed for one night in a town really close by called Metasi. Okay. Which is M-E-T-Z-T-E-S-H-Y. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we That was an Airbnb stop that we made, mm -hmm. um, which was really, really lovely. It was, yeah. The, the people were lovely and the, the, the family built the house that we were staying in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was super modern, which was uh, a big break from the other places we stayed in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, With mountains in the background. Oh, yeah. Their their house overlooked, I don't even know which mountain range. I don't know. <laughs> Wh whichever one's near. An Ansi? Is that how you say that? Annecy, yeah. Annecy? Okay. So, uh, yeah, there were, there were zero buildings between his backyard and the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So it was beautiful. And we Very went... Nice. Fireworks. Yeah, they happened to have like a, a summer festival that night, like oh. their little community. So we were able to walk to uh, a little area where they had a, a large fireworks display and they had live music playing and a bunch of little vendors. 
selling food that Katie couldn't eat. (laughs) We were trying to get an answer about what the fireworks were actually celebrating. And there was a little bit of a language barrier. They couldn't really explain it. It was on June 25th. I don't know if you have any idea what that would have been. No, that's not a major national holiday of any sort. That that must have been a local. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But then from Metasee, we went the next day and did stay in Antsy for, well, everyone says it differently. It's true. We said it Antsy, but we stayed there for two nights Mm -hmm. um, in Hotel du Chateau. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a, there's a, one major chateau in Ansi, and we stayed maybe 10 meters from it or yeah, something. Yeah, it was right wow. at the front. Yeah, it was a, a, great, a great hotel, and it was very reasonably priced. Yeah. That's great. So it gets five stars from us. And it had a tear <laughs> in the city. Yeah, yeah. Put it as a recommendation. Absolutely. Yeah, that's um, good. And their, their, uh, their breakfast was very good. <laughs> yeah. Tons, tons of options, and... It was very delicious. And they rented out bikes. So they did. We took oh. advantage of that. Mm-hmm. And we biked around the lake, nice. which is 25 miles. I'm not sure how many kilometers. Yeah, it's it's a long way. <laughs> 25 miles is probably 38. Okay. I think that's like that. Something yeah. like that. That's a good ride. That's a good long ride. It, it was a long ride. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not used to biking, your behind must have been hurting. <laughs> oh, yes. It might still be bruised. <laughs> yeah. Katie isn't much of a cyclist, but she uh, she got through. In strong. sandals. In sandals. Oh, yeah. goodness. <laughs> well, that's uh, hard. But it was, a, it was hard. a lovely bike ride. It was beautiful. Around, around the lake. Uh, that's and, good. And we stopped uh, about... A third of the way, I guess. Mm-hmm. Do you know what little town that was? Oh, I don't remember what town that was. Okay. Anyway, there's a there's a itty bitty town, and they have a, a they call it a private beach, but they you know they charge maybe two euros to get in. Yes. Or something yeah. like that. Uh, and it was a great stop. We we stopped there for lunch and swam and and rested a little bit. Oh, very nice. It's- we can yeah. look up the name of the town and send it yeah, to send you. Yeah, send that to me because that would be good. But it's probably one of the few along the along the the lake yeah. ride. There aren't that many yeah, options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, actually, we originally had tried to go to a little hidden beach that we had heard of online there mm-hmm. um, that was supposed to be good if, you know, the beaches were too crowded otherwise. Um, but when we went there, it was not much of a beach at all. It was more just like a dock that you could jump off of into the water. Yeah, it was like a, some very wide, maybe four, oh, I guess, oh, 10, okay, I can use meters. Oh. Like a 10 meter wide concrete set of steps yeah. that led to the yeah. water. The town was called Talwa. Ah. Say that again? T-A-L-L-O-I-R-E-S. Yeah. Talwa. Right. It came to me. Nice. <laughs> hmm yeah, so we recommend that beach. Yes, the one where you pay. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was very nice. And and, and, a- and so this is the Lac d'Annecy, right? Yes. 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 And the water was just bright blue. Yeah, it was the warmest water that we encountered on our trip. Yeah, yeah. It, still, it still wasn't warm, but uh, it was. You could stay in it for <laughs> for a few minutes and not. And not freeze. <laughs> feel cold. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was nice. They had like water slides in the water, and they had a like a, a floating dock kind of thing that the younger kids were jumping off of. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a perfect thing to do with little kids. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They would yeah. love it. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. So, did you know you were going to swim? Like you had your swimming suits on. We did. Yeah. Oh, you're so prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan has a tradition of trying to swim <clears throat> in every country that he visits. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yep. We knew there were a few opportunities for us to swim. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay, this is the end of our conversation about Chamonix, Annecy, the Aiguille du Midi, and the Mer de Glace. 
Sorry about the abrupt cut up. I hadn't planned to cut this up like this. I think it's much easier for you to find stuff if the if the information is organized in a bit tidier and more organized packet. So au revoir for now, and you'll get the last uh, the end of our conversation in your podcasting app in a few days. The last part is going to be about Provence the Gorge du Verdon and Carcassonne, and they found some gems there. So um, just watch out for that in your podcasting app. Thank you for listening to the show, and au revoir. Many thanks to listeners who donate to the show or use our Amazon or hotel booking links on joinusinfrance.com or on the show notes that appear on the podcasting app on your phone. Most new listeners find the show through a recommendation from a friend. If you're the kind of fan who drops our name here and there, bless you and thank you for your help. I hope you have a great time in France. And when you come back, consider sharing your experience and thoughts with other listeners. Drop me a line, Annie at joinusinfrance.com, if you'd like to do a trip report with me. Thank you. Au revoir. This episode is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Non-Derivatives International License.